Hello, YouTube. Hey, that echo. Can you hear it? Hello. Today I am at a old cemetery in Mingo County, and I wanted to show you a couple things. Um, this isn't going to be a super happy video because, you know, we do historic things and most of the things are not happy, unfortunately. It's just kind of life, I guess, huh? So let's get to it. First of all, it's a cold, crispy day here in West Virginia. This is the mausoleum I was just standing in front of, of the White family. But that's not who we're here to see, even though they're pretty interesting. One of the mayors of uh, Williamson was buried there. You know, as most people know, I do most of the research and pulling the death certificates, etc. So I keep running into the same things over and over and over when you're pulling younger people's death certificates, and that is tuberculosis. First, I want to say one of the reasons I do these videos, we'll go ahead and talk as we walk down to where I'm going, is not to be morbid. I don't actually enjoy these things in some kind of weird way, you know. But... I'm a factual person. A few years ago, um, I started another YouTube channel called Dead Time Stories, and me and my friends would get in, go in together and rent some of the most haunted, horrifying locations around, and we'd spend the weekend there and I'd document it. Well, you know, I went in as a skeptic. And I heard and saw scary things. It changed me. It changed who I am. It made me realize a few things. Things that I want to bring to this channel. One is to be thankful for what you have. Every day. It's not promised to you. Every single day. I'm a little lost here. Bear with me. And two... When you die, you don't just close your eyes and it turns black. There's something more. All I really want is for people to wake up every day and be grateful for what they have and that you don't have to deal with these kind of things that these people did on that degree. People think they just have it so horrible. Most of the problems people have are self-made. Life's too complicated, you know? Simplify, enjoy, be grateful, be thankful. So that being said, I want to tell you the story of Wendell, um, Helen Marie, and maybe Sadie if I can find her. But we will start with Wendell Campbell. Wendell Lee Campbell was born Mingo County, July 30th, 1932 in West Virginia. His mother is Etta May and his father is Claude Scott. They married when they were teenagers. Wendell was one of four children. One of his siblings, Robert, died in November of the year Wendell was born. So Etta had a four-month-old baby and lost her two-year-old. He died of diphtheria, followed by a heart infection. His brother Garrett also died in 1936 from being born premature at seven months. So it looks like they only had one child that lived till 2010. He died at 13 in 1945 at the Hopemont Tuberculosis Sanitarium in Preston County, West Virginia. Hopemont was West Virginia's first tuberculosis sanatorium. It met a pressing public health need because it, in the early 20th century, a thousand West Virginians died annually from the disease. Getting tuberculosis was pretty much a death sentence unless you were very lucky. Nurses and physicians that were brave enough to treat TB patients often contracted the dread disease themselves. So the Anti-Tuberculosis League of West Virginia lobbied a bill through the legislation in 1911 to build a sanitarium. In those times, they believed such hospitals should be in high, cold places. So the site was chosen on a farm near Terra Alta in Preston County. So Wendell went to the Hopemont Sanitarium hoping to get better. So tuberculosis at the dawn of the 19th century had touched or affected one in every seven human beings on this planet. Appalachia was no different. In fact, we had less hospitals and access to doctors and people not having money. Wendell Campbell. Died 
darling, we miss thee. This is Claude and Edame. They were buried October, I mean married October 16th, 1928. <laughs> they had four children. The thing about tuberculosis is it gets into your airways and then your body begins to release an immune response that makes scar tissue doing damage over time. Some people have the ability, their bodies will contain this infection and you'll become a dormant uh, tuberculosis carrier, basically. And you can live a normal life. But some people get it, and within three years, generally, it turns to what they call consumption, which is why it's called the white death. You turn pale and you just waste away. So that's what happened to little Wendell here. Look at the mist on the mountains. So diphtheria now is pretty much eradicated. It pops up here and there, but there is a vaccine for it. I'm not even sure actually if they give that vaccine anymore. I don't even know if I have that vaccine. I just, I don't know. It's things you don't think about till you, you know, start doing this kind of stuff. So let's go see our next person, which would be Helen Marie. Helen Marie Hedgestis was born September 29th, 1923. Oh great, there's a train coming. Always a train. So we'll wait till that goes by. <laughs> Always a train. So this is where Helen Marie Hedgedis is. She was born September 29th, 1923. She was one of six children born to John, and her name was Babia, but they called her Barbara. They lived in a country area of Canada, Kentucky. John, her dad, was a coal miner, like many people that lived in this area at the time. Her parents had immigrated from Hungary. Now, Helen Marie died of tuberculosis June 28, 1942, at 18 years old. The parents and the other kids, I found, are buried in New Jersey at St. Nicholas Hungarian Greek Church Cemetery. I'm not sure how life took them there, but that's where their road ended. So Helen Marie is here by herself. I'm sorry this happened to you, Helen. Rest in peace, my dear. Now, just a side note, this is Cora Kimball. She actually lived next door to the house we used to own and they tore it down. I didn't even know a house was there. So I looked up the address on Google Earth and old Cora lived there. And her son, James. Now James died at war. Rest in peace, guys. He was born 1906, 1930. Died 1930, and she died 1930. So rest in peace, Ernest. And I can't read the name. 
Rest in peace, you guys. So the trains are just getting louder. I'm pretty sure, I don't think I can find Sadie's grave, but I'll tell you about her. She is buried here. I'll tell you about her now. As usual it's starting to rain a lot and um so i'm gonna get out of here i hope you enjoy the video you know i appreciate you watching and if you can subscribe help us grow so that we can do more of these videos i think we can um there's just so much to do and we have lots of imagination so we appreciate the support you have a wonderful day